just thank you and praise you so much this morning. We thank you for your word, Lord. And Lord, we're going to open your word this morning and we ask that you would touch our hearts. Speak something new to us this morning, Lord. And I ask that you would touch my lips to speak what you would have me to speak, Lord. They're not my own words, but your words. My words. Your wonderful name. Amen. Well, if you've been following the last several weeks, like Mark said, we first I did a message justified. You know, remember that remember what justified means, it's just as if I never said. Remember that? And we talked about being sanctified. That's the process of justification. When you accept Christ as your Savior, you're justified, you're just as if you've never sinned. But then we go through a process because we all know that we still sin. So there's a process of sanctification where we are being made holy and being set aside for God. And we also mentioned last week about being glorified. That's the final state. When you receive a glorified body. But today I'm going to talk about electrified. The church needs to be electrified. Amen. We need to have power. A church without power doesn't do anybody any good. A Christian without power in their life doesn't get very far. Acts 4, 31, 33 says, And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. It says, And with great power, they shared the Word of God. That's how we need to share it, with great power. We don't need to know where our source of power is. God is the source of our power. That's where real power comes from. It comes from God. Amen. Second Samuel 22, 33 says, God is my strength and what? And power. And He makes my way perfect. Psalm 65, 6 says, Who established the mountains by His strength, being clothed with power. God is clothed with power. He is the source of power. Psalm 62, 11, God has spoken once. Twice I have heard this, that power belongs to God. True power belongs to God. And we need to tap into that power source. If God is the source of our power, the Holy Spirit is the extension cord. That's right. Are you plugged in? You need to get hold of that Holy Spirit extension cord and plug into the power of God. Amen. So don't leave home without it. Amen. How many of you are leaving home every day without the power of the Holy Spirit at work in your life? Well, you're leaving something important behind. You're going out without any power. Don't leave home without it. Luke 24, 49 says, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. That was one of the final instructions that Jesus gave to his disciples. He's telling them, don't leave home. Stay in Jerusalem. Don't leave home until that power has come upon you. You need that power. You need to be plugged in. So in a sense, he's saying, don't leave home without him. Stay in Jerusalem until you're endued with power. There was reason those were his final words. Because the church at that point had a lot of problems. They were weak. They were cowardly. We're going to look at some of that in a little bit. But... They needed power. They needed a transformation before they could go out and change the world. Matthew 5, 14 through 16 says, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. How many know a light doesn't shine without power? You need a power source. 
Back then, the power source was oil. They were oil lamps, but it still was a power source. Now we take the oil, we convert it into electricity, and that's the power source we use to light our when we turn our lights on. We need power to light that lamp. But how many remember this song? You sang the song, This Little Light of Mine. What are you supposed to do? You're supposed to let it shine. You're supposed to hide it under a basket? No. No. I'm going to let it shine. But how many of you are letting your light shine? So many people, they come to church, they let it shine in the building as soon as they go outside, they put it under a basket. I don't want anybody to see my light. They might make fun of me. They might persecute me. I might have all kinds of problems if they know I'm a Christian. Yeah. Well, you might. That's right. You know, those of us that came Friday night and we watched the movie China Cry. And the thing in that movie that you saw is that the woman that the movie was about in China, she had accepted Christ as her Savior at a very young age, but had forgotten all about it. And she was serving in the communist China to teach and they begin to persecute her because of her background and going to Christian schools and they thought that they could drive that from her but what they actually did is they drove her back to God yeah. and she became a powerful Christian because of the persecution that what she thought she had forgotten as a child came back to her and God delivered her mightily from her. But she went through some tough times. She went through some real persecution. If you've never seen the movie, China Cry is a great movie to see what how persecution actually grows the church. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 4, 5, 14 says, mm -hmm. Therefore, he says, Awake, you who sleep. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Wake up! That's what it's saying. Arise from the dead. Don't walk around like a bunch of dead people. Don't be spiritually dead. Let Jesus give you light because you're supposed to be a light to the world. You can't be a light without power. Remember the Holy Spirit extension cord. You need it. Plug in. And don't be a dim bulb. <laughs> the church doesn't need a bunch of dim bulbs. We want to be bright, don't we? A lot of people walking around are just a dim bulb for God. People don't even notice it given off any light. We get plugged in. So we're talking about that we need to be plugged in. We need to be plugged into God's power. 2 Timothy 3.5 says, Having a form of godliness, but denying its power, and from such people turn away. A lot of churches today have a form of godliness, but they're denying its power. They're just going through the motions. They're just making themselves feel good for a few hours and then not doing much with it. We're warned of that kind of church. We don't want to be a church that has a form of godliness, but we're denying the power of God. We want to experience the power of God. There's many ways that you experience that. We're experiencing the power of God in our own church and seeing things that are miraculous begin to happen. Some of them are slow. I saw, it was a miracle to me this morning when I was standing out on the patio there watching Fred almost running up, pushing his, he wasn't riding in his wheelchair, he was pushing it up the ramp. I told him I'm going to take that away from him pretty soon. But he didn't think he was going to be able to do that again. I mean, he's had a tough go, but we've been praying for him. Miracles sometimes take time. Yeah. But it's no less a miracle. No, it because he's gone through a, a rough time. But God is using it. That's the power of God. We've seen that. And we're going to yeah. hopefully in the future have some testimonies. I know at some point Linda's going to say, I want to share. You're going to share a testimony about the power of God. <laughs> and you better show up. It's awesome. <laughs> better all be here. <laughs> Okay. Charles Spurgeon wrote, More than this, some have a form of godliness upheld and proclaimed by religious activity. It is possible to be intensively active in the outside work of the church and yet to know nothing of spiritual power. Yeah. One may be an excellent Sunday school teacher after a fashion and yet have need to be taught 
what it is to be born again. Mm -hmm. One may be an eloquent preacher or a diligent officer in the church of God and yet know nothing of the mysterious, mysterious power of the spirit of truth upon the heart. Yes. Mm -hmm. True words from yeah. Charles Spurgeon. And there are people, they can teach Sunday school, they can do great things, but they don't even know what it is to be born again. Mm -hmm. Preachers that don't really understand the power of God. It's nothing new. That was written in 1889 in a sermon, The Form of Godliness Without Power. Wow. You know, nothing, there's nothing new under the sun, the Bible tells us. And we're learning that in, in Sunday school as we've been going through the, the epistles and the problems in the church that Paul was dealing with early on. Same thing we're dealing with today. And it all goes down to the church without power. That's why I'm enjoying the, the Bible study on Wednesday night. If you haven't come, come. We're going through the book of Acts. The book of Acts should be called, they call it the Acts of the Apostles. I think that's the wrong name. It's the Acts of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes sit down, read through the book of Acts, and underline every time it mentions the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts. Because it was by the power of the Holy Spirit that the early church grew. Without the Holy Spirit, there would have been no church. So the church before Pentecost, before the Holy Spirit was poured out upon the disciples, was fearful. It went into hiding. It denied Christ. It wouldn't stand up in public. Went back to their old occupations. That's what happened. But we'll read about it. Peter denied Christ. The disciples ran and hid. They all went back to going fishing. But after Pentecost, they were bold. They came out of hiding. They proclaimed Christ. They stood up in public. They gave their lives for the gospel. What made that difference? It was the power of the Holy Spirit that had come upon them. Transformed their lives. Completely different individuals. An electrified church is full of witnesses, not cowards. A church that is electrified, that is plugged in, is a church that's full of witnesses, not a bunch of cowards that leave the building and keep their mouths shut because they're afraid. Acts 1.8 says, But you shall receive what? Power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be what? Witnesses, witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. See, the purpose of the Holy Spirit being poured out upon them in the baptism of the Holy Spirit that is spoken of in the book of Acts was to make them power, to give them power to be witnesses. Now, sometimes in churches they get all caught up just in the, in the power part of it. They forget what it's for. People get all excited when the Holy Spirit moves in the church. But you know what? If the Holy Spirit is moving in the church, you should be moving outside the church. Because it's the power to be a witness. <coughs> yes, you should be seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit if you don't have it. Why? Because you need that power to do what? To be a witness? Do you need that power so you can use spiritual gifts within the church? That's just part of it. That's a small part of it. The real purpose is to be a witness to the world. And we are living in times where more and more the Christian church is being persecuted. If you don't think persecution is coming to America, you, you've got your eyes closed. You've got blinders on. It's coming. It's already here. They're trying to drive the church indoors. One of the things that Hitler did in Nazi Germany, one of the first things, he drove the church indoors. He originally got together with pastors and said, yeah, I, I support the church. Well, how did he support the church? He passed laws that they couldn't speak in public. They could only proclaim the word of God within their buildings. That's happening in America today. They are trying to push us into the buildings that you can't speak in public. How are they doing that? By this ridiculous thing called hate speech. The problem with passing laws on hate speech is then who determines what that hate speech is? Yes, there is some speech that is hateful. But declaring God's word is not hateful. I did a message a while back called Love Speech. It's online. If you've never heard it, go, go on YouTube or on a Facebook page. Look it up. It's Love Speech. When we declare what God's word says and tell somebody they're living in sin, then it's not hate. 
You do that out of love because you don't want them to suffer the eternal punishment. Yeah. But something's come to my attention today that's, that's difficult, and I never thought of it this way. But, you know, One thing I know is a lot of churches won't talk about sin. But the church has gone so long not talking about sin because they didn't want to offend anyone that we have a generation that don't even know what sin is. Yeah. You try to talk to them about sin and they look at that's like you got bugs crawling out of you. What are you talking about sin? Nothing's sin. Nothing's wrong. I make up my own mind on what's right and wrong. What are you talking about? So now we have to take them back to the very beginning. You have to start at the beginning and explain them where sin came into the world, what it is, before you can bring them to why they need Jesus and need to be saved. And it's the church's fault. We've given in to this political correctness idea that... The, Certain speech is okay and other speech is not okay and we don't want to offend anybody. Jesus offended a lot of people in his life. Jesus offended the people in his own hometown. Read it, says he offended them. And they tried to drive him out and stone him. Because the gospel, it says, is an offense. Because it goes against our nature. That's why it offends us. Our nature is not good. Our nature is to sin. And when we're confronted with that, it doesn't feel good. And we get offended. But that offense should lead us to the truth and lead us to Christ. And then we're no longer offended by it when we understand it and we receive it. An electrified church is a place of fellowship and not factions. It's a place where we come together and we're a family and we love each other. We don't, we're not divided. We're not backbiting and fighting and Unfortunately, that's happened in the church. We were just reading about that this morning in the book of Titus. The problems within the church, the factions that were forming early on. <clears throat> we need to avoid that. If we're plugged in, if we're electrified, if we've got God's power moving in the church, we're going to be a place of fellowship, a place where people are coming together and loving each other. Acts 32. Now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. Go back about why is that? Because of the power of the Holy Spirit in the church. They were of one heart and one soul. At that time, they shared everything in common. A lot of people say, oh, my wife heard somebody recently say, yeah, all, all ministers want to do is take offerings, try to get money from people. That's what they're all about, just trying to get your money. Well, no. That's not what we're all about. We're all about bringing you to Jesus Christ. And back in the early church, they gave everything. When was the last time I got up in the pulpit and I said, okay, now all of you need to sell all your property and everything you have and lay the money here in the front. Well, they did that in the book of Acts. And if you were in with us on Wednesday night, one couple lied about it, both dropped dead because they lied about it. But there was a reason for that. In the early church, they were under such heavy persecution, the only way they could survive was to pool all their resources together. We may get to that point someday. If America keeps going the way it's going, there may come a day again when the church, everybody's got to pool everything they have together and we feed each other, take care of each other because some won't be able to work. So we don't know. But it doesn't have to happen if we would get filled with power and be witnesses and get outside the church and begin to transform our world. Yes. It doesn't have to get that way. Yes. But God will allow, God doesn't bring the persecution. He allows us to bring it on ourselves. He stands back and if we turn our backs on Him, persecution will come and because He knows it then we'll turn back to Him. Sometimes it has to happen. But I don't want to see that happen. Luke 9, 46 says, an argument started among them as which of them might be the greatest. See, that's what the church was before power. <clears throat> Look at the difference between those two. This was when they were just fledgling disciples with Jesus. They were arguing amongst each other. Who was going to be the greatest? Who's going to be the greatest in this church? After power, it says, they were of one heart and one soul. They were no longer worried about who was going to be great because Jesus taught them the servant of all is the servant that's the greatest of all. If you want to be great in the kingdom of God, be a servant. 
We have some wonderful servants in this church. We are tremendously blessed. Sometimes they're not recognized. Because sometimes a servant, with the little things they do, we just take it for granted. Oh, we come to the church, boy, I'm sure glad the garbage cans are empty. But we don't think about who empties them. Oh, I'm glad this is done. I'm not, we don't think, I'm glad the lawn's mowed today. Don't think about who does that. There are servants that do those things. And the Bible tells me they're the greatest of all. And I sure appreciate them. <laughs> An electrified church is a growing church. You want the church to grow, plug it into the power of God. Get the people plugged into the power of God and the church is going to grow. Look in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 2, there were 3,000 converts. Acts chapter 5 says multitudes of converts. Acts chapter 4 says 5,000 converts. Acts chapter 6 says new numbers multiply. Why? Because the church was plugged in to the power of God. That's what's going to make the church grow. We're going to be talking more in the coming weeks about how to get plugged in to this power from God. But begin to pray about that. You don't have to wait. If you've not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, pray about it. God, baptize me in the Holy Spirit. But I feel we're going to need to teach a little more so people really understand what it is because it's become so misunderstood in the church. And it's been abused in the church. The gifts of the Spirit have been abused. There's a whole letter written to correct the church in Corinth because they abused it and how it properly functions in the church. We need to keep it within what the Bible says. But we need to understand it. We can't be afraid of it. We need to seek it. I should have put my little video in here and the clip that I have of... It, it's an old beat-down church and it's got this eerie music and it zooms in. Dale's <laughs> actually show it sometimes. <laughs> Don't tell what it does. No, no. Three times, still scares me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> three times. <laughs> but I'll have to show it. It's, it's a funny little clip, but it's about not being afraid of the Holy Spirit. Was it Becca or Tori Bell? It was Becca. Okay, okay, you tell it later. They'll tell it later. <laughs> well, we're going to be teaching more on that, but begin to seek that. You don't have to do it in church. We will have a time in the coming months. Well, we will stay for people who want to stay and pray that if you want to receive the power of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We want to have more understanding of really what that is. We'll be praying for that. But we want to put it in the correct context. And today I want to put it in the context of the church. The correct context is to be witnesses. That's why we need it. That's the job of the church is to be witnesses. We were instructed to go into the world and preach the gospel. I don't find anywhere in there where it says, sit in the church and listen to the gospel. If you can find that verse, I missed it. Show, show me where it is. The verse I read says, go into the world and preach the gospel. We need to go. We come to get filled up, and then we should go out. Let's bow our heads for just a moment as we pray. It all begins with a relationship with Jesus Christ. Like Charles Spurgeon said, that there are some that, that can teach in the church but don't understand what it is to be born again. It's really not a complicated thing. To be born again means you are a new creation in Christ. That you've accepted Him. You've become justified. Your sins have been forgiven. You are a new creation. And if anybody's here and you say, you know what, I really need to become a new creation. I've never really understood it. Don't leave today without accepting Christ. And these messages go out, and others here listen to them online. And if you're listening to this, and you don't know Jesus, you need to accept Jesus as your Savior. You must be born again. Yeah. <clears throat> anybody looking around, if there's anybody here today that says, you know, I need to ask Jesus into my life today. Just slip a hand up for a second. Heavenly Father, I thank You and I praise You so much for Your Word. Lord, help us to take Your Word to heart. 
that they'll be, bring life into us this week, Lord. But help us to get plugged in. Lord, I pray for those who have not yet plugged in to your power source, who have not yet received the power from on high. Just as you told your disciples, wait until you receive power, that they would begin to wait on you, Lord, and pray for it. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your church, Lord, and it's under power. That we are an instrument to re reach our community, to reach our world. Use us, Lord. Empower us today to go out from here and share your word with somebody this week. We ask that, Jesus, in your wonderful name.